Today on Tau Flater Mouse, we're going to explore if polytetrafluoroethylene, also known as Teflon, is a viable shotgun projectile. Alexei Lavrov from St. Petersburg, Russia, sent us some interesting projectiles to test out. These are made out of solid Teflon. Compared to other polymers, Teflon has a relatively high density. A Delrin projectile of the same dimensions weighs 12.7 grams, while the Teflon projectile that we'll be testing today comes in at 19.5 grams, or just under two-thirds of an ounce. We'll not only test to see if this shape is aerodynamically sound, but also if the material, Teflon, is strong enough to hold up to the rigors of 10,000 Gs of acceleration. Hey, Catalan Flater crew, here we are some more out at the rifle range. Which rifle range are we at today? Uh, we're still there at the uh, Roscoe P. Coltrane Private Rifle Range. Okay. Yeah. Um, we got some Teflon. <laughs> Pure Teflon. Pure Teflon slugs from Alexei out of uh, Russia. Uh, uh, don't know what to think. Don't know what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to send some downrange through the uh, smooth bore and the rifle, fully rifled barrel. And uh, I don't know, Teflon should be pretty slick. We'll yeah. see what happens. <laughs> Hydrostatic ballistic basketball, that's what we call that these days. There we go. Well, it, it hit the target, that's a good sign. In real time, it looked like a complete success, but slow motion does not lie. The slug actually broke into three pieces. The largest of those pieces actually hit our ballistic hydrostatic basketball. One thing we quickly learned was that Teflon is not as resilient as we anticipated. It could not handle that extreme shock of acceleration, at least in this test. All right, full rifling. I'm ready when you are. Take two. In test number two using full rifling, we had even more breakage of the slug. Uh, we did have a, a recognizable piece of the slug, the tail there, so that's spinning with the little blue stripe on it. That was the largest piece that actually hit the jug. There were some smaller pieces that also hit it. The results using full rifling were so bad we decided to go back to using the smooth bore and see if we could uh, garner better results and see if we could actually keep the slug intact. I didn't think Teflon would be brittle like that, you know? That's what's kind of surprising to yeah. me. There were uh. chunks all over around the target Yeah. on that last one. Okay, let's... Uh... Let's see if this we have any better luck with this one. I'm ready. In test number three, again more frustration as the slug is again broken into multiple pieces. There appears to be a weak point where the nose of the slug steps down and becomes the tail. On a personal note, I like to see success, and it pains me to see a slug fail like this. I know that Alexi spent a lot of time, uh, money, and resources to create these things. Okay, I'm ready. All right, let's see if we get another one right through the center hole. <laughs> okay. In test number four, same exact conditions using a smooth bore and all that. Again, we had the same exact failure. Now when you do the same thing, the exact same way, you usually have the same exact results. So fortunately, I had the insight to load a couple of them for the next two tests with a lighter powder load to see if uh, the shock on the slug will be less and the slugs will actually stay intact. Okay, still no what I would call success with these yet. Let's see if we can hit a smaller target with them. I'm ready. That is vaporized that thing. Test number five using the lighter powder load. Finally we have a slug that's 
completely intact. Unfortunately, it's not very stable in flight. It was starting to yaw a little bit. But with luck, it did strike the can and tore it almost in half. Very impressive uh, amount of energy transfer right there. Okay, let's see what it does to Kevlar. It is Teflon and uh, might go through Kevlar. I don't know. I'm ready when you are. All righty then. Center mass. In our final test, number six, the slug did uh, remain intact, but again, we had uh, a little to no stability. In fact, the slug almost made a full 180 turn by the time it hit the Kevlar vest. Now, it is possible if we used a rifled barrel uh, with the lighter powder load, it would have been stable in flight. Now, there are slugs that are stable in flight, as you've seen if you watched our videos without spin stabilization but this slug is just not one of them. Now, Lexi did send us the Delrin version of these slugs also that I showed earlier, the ones that weighed about 12 grams, and we'll see if we can have better results with that, learning from our mistakes of this video. Maybe load them backwards or something like that. Well, let's wrap this video up. I appreciate you watching it. Sometimes we uh, have success, sometimes we have failures, but we always learn new things along the way. Research continues.